Are we there yet? Yes, we are. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Dan. Maybe you already know that, and you've already missed 841 broadcasts. Where have you been? <laughs> Where have I been? I've been, well, I've been all over the place. Anyway, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. And this is Let's Get Official in my sl silly little shtick here. Daily Art Adventure number 842, Anatomy Hips. <laughs> I did that so hard a couple of weeks ago that this little clapper thing went flying off. <laughs> so I had to do this excellent repair job. I thought, hello, Crystalline. I thought about buying a new one and then I thought, no, It'd be more funny. That's what I care about mostly, that it's funny. More funny if I just repair it poorly. <laughs> All right, let me tell you what's happening today. I, I don't have a painting job that I'm working on. I'm right between jobs, waiting for an email. And, uh, hello, Sherry. Thanks for speaking up. You don't say anything very often, do you? Thanks for speaking. <laughs> and um, so no painting jobs today, so I'm in between. I have, I'm very excited about this, this summer and fall, I'm teaching a 12-week class on anatomy, and I'm very excited about it. I'm teaching it mostly because I want to teach it. <laughs> that is to say, I'm teaching it mostly because I'm the one that needs to learn more about anatomy than all my students. Does that make sense? It's like, man, I really want to teach this class. Now, first of all, I, I, I just, for, I don't know, I just love teaching anatomy for some reason. And this is, this is going to be anatomy by rote, R-O-T-E. Anatomy by rote memory, which is um, one fully, I would say, one half of the skill you need in order to be good at drawing human beings. You need two separate and distinct skills. I didn't know I was going to get into this, but here we go. You need two separate and distinct sk skills. I'm seeing like a, a balance here, and they need to be pretty balanced. The two skills you need, one is you already know about, and that is the skills of observation, looking, seeing, 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 observing, and then drawing what you see. That's skill number one. Here's the funny thing. You can do hours and hours and hours of drawing by observation and never quite build up your rote memory skills. I don't really know how this works, but I, I've experienced it. Let me give you a quick story. In 2012 and 2013, I participated in an art competition in Grand Rapids, Michigan called Art Prize, all one word, Art Prize. You can look it up and find out about it. I had a great time. I didn't win. There's a number of reasons for that. Um, I, I, uh, I did all my painting on site and the judging started they uh, like three days into the event <laughs> and so I was 10% finished with my project when I was already eliminated from the from the you know competition because I my anyway anyway here's <laughs> up there in Grand Rapids which is my hometown original hometown by the way um, I did portraits all day every day and I went there two years in a row each event was three weeks long so for three weeks, two years in a row, for six weeks, I was painting almost nothing but portraits for 11 or 12 hours a day. Now, that might sound hard or grueling to you. I was absolutely in hog heaven. Those were six of the most pleasurable and ecstatic weeks of my life. I didn't do anything. Of course, all the rest of my life, you know, went to squash because <laughs> I was ignoring it all, you know, paying bills, who cares, you know, all that kind of stuff, <laughs> taxes, what's that? Because I was just doing nothing but doing portraits. I ended up doing, during that six week period, I ended up doing 111 portraits. So do the math, I don't know how many that is a day, but you know, it's pretty, pretty good. And these are oil painting. You can, you can see, just go to my YouTube channel, which is what you're on already, I presume and do a search for art prize. There's a couple of videos there that show that work. Here's the funny part. After three weeks each year of doing portraits all day, every day, when I came home from that event, 
I was virtually no better at drawing out of my head than I had been before I did those six weeks, three weeks, two separate years. Does that make sense? Drawing all day every day from observation did almost nothing to help me understand the human face in this case. That sounds very strange, but it's true. I, I felt it. I tasted it. It's like, man, I'm almost no better because these two functions of our brain are so separate. One is memorizing rote, R-O-T-E, details, tricks about the human anatomy, and the other is observing. And to be good, you need to do both. In fact, um, one of the guy, one of the guys I watch on YouTube sometimes, Paul Talks, T-A-L-K-S, quotes um, Rubens, I believe it, in one of the great classic, great Renaissance figurative painters. Rubens, the guy that does the little chubby little cherubs and chubby women <laughs> and muscular men. Look him up. Rubens, old dead guy. Um, Rubens says, you should be able to do all your anatomy, all your figures for, out of your head. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Am I behind? I've got some catching up to do. I'm already, <laughs> old, already 66 years old. I can't begin to do that, but I want to make progress. So that's why I'm teaching the class. All right. <laughs> so tooth skills, observation, and rote memory. So today we're going to do rote memory. And this broadcast, by the way, if, if I like it well enough, I'm going to condense it down into a 10 or 12 minute video, uh, edited video that will go into my Anatomy Master's series okay and you guys can give me your feedback as to what you think is going to work and what's not all right now let me move you guys around I cover up your eyeballs momentarily like a falconer <laughs> so you're looking straight down now at my drawing table and i'm going to tell you first of all that this is the book that i'm working hello jake this is the book that i'm working from today I own 20 some anatomy books. The reason I'm working from the last yesterday, the last two days and today I've been working through this book is because I plan to give it away. In fact, I already know who I'm giving it to. And um, um, this is one of the lesser anatomy books that I own. By that I mean this is one that I'm willing to give away. Does that make sense? But then I thought, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, before I give it away, I bet there's some stuff in here that can help me, even though it's lesser. Let me tell you what are the, the best anatomy books on the planet, in my humble opinion. I've done this before, but I want to show you again. Okay, just for those of you who missed it, the three best anatomy books, they're all Americans, and so I might be wrong because maybe I'm being very Americentric here. Uh, but they are Bridgman's Life Drawing, George Bridgman, Art Student League of New York, 1920s. Um, figure Drawing for All It's Worth, Andrew Loomis, 1940s. And Drawing the Head and Figure by Jack Ham, 1960s. So there you go. I have one that's 50 years old, 70 years old, and 90 or 100 years old. There you go. Those are the three. Those are the three greatest books. And those are the ones I'm going to focus on. But... I thought, well, before I, before I discard this one, so to speak, by giving it to a young artist, let me go through and see if there's anything good in here. And indeed, guess what? There was. So I, I'm not going to go through this book with you, but I'm going to show you um, some of the things I've learned from it. Now, before I go any further, though, let's talk about the, without question, the most important anatomy book you will ever own is what? That's right. It's the, it's the book it's the book that you draw in and so that's what i've got right here i don't even remember when i did this evidently i did this for a, a small group class it might have been when i had um, some young high school and middle school boys drawing with me uh, and i so i just decided to continue in this nice big book so i do strongly 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 did i say that strongly enough <laughs> i strongly recommend having an anatomy workbook or sketchbook. I have several of these, uh, three, two or three around, scattered around the house um, that I've done over the years. Not nearly as many as I would like, but I'm going to finish, I'm going to fill this book up for sure by the time I start painting, uh, teaching my class this summer. 
All right, so this, I'm gonna skip this page. I just wanna show you, I, I did this stuff yesterday. Um, first of all, just for fun, I, I, you don't get any benefit. No, let me say that again. Let me be more accurate. You get about 5% benefit by looking at these drawings. It helps your drawing about 5%. These are not scientific numbers. I'm just trying to give you a general impression. You can look and look and look and go, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And your, your own drawing is improving by about 5%. Got it? If, on the other hand, you pick up like you should, you lazy son of you, <laughs> you lazy good art student, you, <laughs> I'm picking on myself here, do you understand? You pick up a pencil and start copying what's in here, listen, then you benefit about 95%. So what do you want, 5% or 95%? Now, just, I, I, it just so happens that every drawing in this book, I have, I have done that to. The other two books, not so. I look forward to doing that. Anyway, so these are sketches that I did out of uh, the, uh, I Chris forgot the name to tell you this name, artist named Christopher Hart. He has some really good stuff in here. Again, I, I don't think he's a, a Bridgman or Jack Ham or, or um, Andrew Loomis, but that doesn't matter. He, he doesn't have to be. He's good. He's, he knows some stuff I don't know, so he's good enough for me to learn from. Fair enough? And uh, these are, I copied some of his mouths, his lips yesterday, smiling women lips. I really worked for quite a while on, I, I bounced off his teaching and I, I worked on ears. So I'm going to teach that here. One of these broadcasts, I'll be doing ears, but I don't want to do that today because I want to go straight to this page. All right. So, and I've, I've already uploaded this uh, onto my um, Dan Nelson Art um, YouTube community page, The Hips. And this is step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven steps. To drawing, to drawing the hips. And this is just page one, of course. It, it, page two is much, much simpler. But uh, you, you can download this for yourself from my, uh, from my page. That is YouTube. And when you click on my channel, click on Community, and that's where my still images are. All right, so that, this is just a cleaned up version of this. This is my actual pencil drawing. So here's page two, and uh, we'll stop there. Now, here's, we're not going to draw today. Well, at least not right now. I'm going to do what I call kinesthetic learning. Kinesthetic is movement oriented and some people are learn better. We all learn, some learn by hearing, some learn by seeing, some learn by doing and those are the kinesthetic people. Now we all learn a little bit by seeing, hearing and doing um, but there's probably some other ones that I'm forgetting but I'm just going to focus on right now on the third one of those kinesthetic that is moving. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, and you, you guys can let me know if you think, hello, Mayor Jorn. Hello, Uncle 60. <laughs> did you really go to Woodstock? You didn't really, did you? <laughs> yes, you're exactly right, Mayor Jorn. All right. Let's talk about the hips. And I, I might be moving you guys around quite a bit. I don't know. Um, the hips are essentially a bowl. Yeah, I'm going to move you already. So hang on, hang on. I'm going to blind you once again because I want you to look at me. Aren't you lucky? Okay. So here's me standing. Um, I want you to understand that all of our hips are essentially a bowl that hold our innards in. All right. And when, when you look at the hips, they're, they're surprisingly bowl-like. So just picture that we're starting with a bowl. Okay, now I'm going to move you back. I'm exp that's just to explain why are we making a bowl? We're making a bowl because that's a great place to start. So I'm going to have my students, maybe, either they watch this video or they do it. So I've already done this. Let's pretend this is like a cooking show. Pretend you're making a bowl. Whoops! Ta-da! There it is, a finished bowl. Okay? So there's a little bowl. This is some kind of clay. I don't even know what it is. I thought it was Sculpey, but I put it in the oven one time and it just melted. So it's whatever it is, it's not Sculpey. I don't even know what it is. Doesn't matter. All right, let me show you where we're going with this. Bowl, step number one, make a bowl. Step number two, we're going to stretch. 
stretch the bowl so it's oblong. All right, it was just a bowl, now it's an oblong bowl. Step number two. Step number three, we're gonna take it and we're going to tilt it or we're gonna spill it, sploosh, spill. So here's, here we are right there. Imagine, and it's tilt, tilted at about that angle. So if looking from your angle, it was straight up and down and then we tilt it. That is very important to getting the hip, the human hip right. Now, action number three. So we've had two actions. One, stretch. Two, spill or tilt or spill. Three, whack. <laughs> so here it is. It's tilting forward and we're going to take a great big axe. I don't have an axe. It's too, too, too big for this, but I do have a pocket knife. And we're going to go, kwanka. <laughs> <laughs> the sound effects are very, very important. We can discard that part now. Now, so we had a bowl, we stretched it, we tipped it, and then we whacked it. Kawanka. <laughs> okay. Ac action number four. We're going to take a great big cosmic thumb and we're going to smoosh it. <laughs> <laughs> Spell that. All right, can, can you, some of you guys can already see how we're kind of going in a hip word direction. But let's review. Bowl, stretch, <coughs> spill, whack, smush. <coughs> okay, so now we've got something like this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a great big cosmic old-fashioned can opener. And we're going to open up the bottom of this bowl. I don't know if this will really work. It's just the concept is what I want you to get. We're going to open up the bottom of this bowl. And because we're using this kind of can opener, we're creating a triangle shape here. It comes out. So the hole, the bowl is what I meant to say. The bowl now still has a hole in it. Let, I didn't mean still. The bowl now has a hole in it. Let's clean up the hole just a little bit. All right. And it has a triangle. And some, again, some of you guys are recognizing this already. This is the sternum, our tailbone. Have you ever broken your tailbone? I did one time. At least I didn't go to the doctor because there's nothing they can do about it. But it hurt, it hurt for six months. I just sat, I just came down on a, on a coffee table one time. Oh, that's about 20 some, year, 20 some years ago. All right. Now, it's not important that this be a perfect copy of the hips. Everything that's important is happening in your brain. So let's review again. What did we do? First, we made a bowl, pretend it's a bowl. Then we stretched it. Then we spilled it or tipped it. Then we whacked it. Then we smooshed it. Then we can opener it, <laughs> which made the bottom a hole and it created a triangle. So that's, that's what I want you to be able to repeat in your mind. All right, let's go back to our nicer mold now here. Let's now pretend that we are so proud of this beautiful sculpture bowl that we want to make some little uh, legs for it, like like tabletop, um, a stand, like we, we do with our family pictures. And so we're making legs out of, I made a little worm here. And now it should stand up on our table Oh, and then we discover, oh, no, it won't either because our little tailbone is not long enough. We, if it do stands up, it's going to probably fall. Well, look, it is kind of standing up. All right. <laughs> Will you play along with me? This is all mental. This is all mental. Can you reproduce everything we've done? Now, I don't know about you, but that's, that's amazingly close to a human hip. We just have basically one more thing to do. And that is we're going to pick up a ball peen hammer. Now, I don't happen to own a ball peen hammer, which surprises me because it sounds like the kind of thing I would own. But there's a picture of what a ball peen hammer looks like. It's got a ball on one end. One end is flat like a normal hammer. The other end is round. And I won't bother explaining to you what, why that's such a great tool. But trust me, it is. And it's called a ball peen. P-E-E-E-N. Peen. Ball peen hammer. And uh, mine, is, mine is too big. Here's a regular hammer, <laughs> but I'm going to move you guys right now again anyway, because here's what I would have my students in my class do, okay? To understand your hips, you're going to imagine that instead of a regular hammer, this is rounded. And, and these, are, these are your hips, right? You're like this. 
And you're going to take a ball peen hammer. Hang, hang, hang on, hang on. Make sure you're pointing at the right place. Okay? And you go, bam! <laughs> I don't recommend doing that in real life. But visually, you're going to do it. Bam! All right? Now, let's show what, let, let's see what happened to, hang on, hang on. Let's see what happened to our little clay model when we uh, bammed it. I'm looking for a round. This is one tool I didn't have ready. Here we go. Close enough. Where does this bam go? It goes right here about where this leg, you know, the leg that I was making to stand up, our, our, our favorite Ming Dynasty bowl, we bam, we bammed right there. And we bammed right there. Now, why is that important? It's very important because that's where the head of our femur. Now, I'm going to take just a second and real quickly just draw a real simple and probably not very accurate, but accurate enough. There, sorry, there. Let me, let me do that again because I can edit that part out. All right, so I'm going to draw a very simple and rudimentary and probably not very accurate, but accurate enough. There is the largest bone in the human body is the femur. This is the leg bone. Leg bone's connected to the knee bone, which is down here. Leg bone connected to the hip bone, which we're making. If this part right here, as, as you can see, it's sort of like the number seven, right? This part, for, if we're doing the right side, goes into this hip right here. This roundness goes into this hole that we just bammed with our ball peen, imaginary ball peen hammer. You with me? So now, at the end of all these crazy shenanigans, we are able to draw pretty accurately the human hip. Here's what it looks like from the side. There's this, this, let me... A hole that we just, this doesn't go all the way through, this is just an indentation that we just hit with our imaginary ball peen hammer. Here's our tailbone it comes on the back of the hips and here's the view from the front now the front looks amazingly like a butterfly or a moth if you want to have just one more one more image to compare your your hip to it looks an awful lot like a butterfly now before I go on to page two let's talk real briefly about in the red type here this is how the hips, this hip bone shows up through flesh when you're drawing a human figure. Ready? I've got one, two, three, four, five different ways. Number one, A, it, it, it shows, it indicates the shelf, I'm calling it the shelf of the rump. <laughs> the shelf, and again, I'm going to move you guys and point you at me just for a second. And of course, we, we really can't talk about anatomy without getting just a little bit Intimate, but not too intimate, okay? <laughs> Just enough. This is, this. I think this is, you do not need safe search on for this. Uh, I think it's okay if kids are in the room. But here's, here's what I'm calling the shelf right here, is um, the back part where, where my backbone goes into the small of my back and then curves back out to the tailbone. See, I'm hitting the tailbone right there. And I'm calling this the shelf. Uh, this is one of the most, uh, yeah, critical angles in the human anatomy. If you want your anatomy, your human being to look human, it's got to have, so that's what I'm calling the shelf. That is one of the things that shows up if you um, draw this hip correctly. Okay, what shows up next? Okay, on the front side, I should have left the camera pointing at me, perhaps, or maybe not. Um, on the front side, where these, where these two, I called them as if we imagined, we had an imaginary bowl that we wanted to display on our coffee table. So we gave it legs, two little triangles that came out. And right here, where they meet, which is right here, that is the frontmost bone that's right here. That's the frontmost bone of the hips. Are you with me? And that shows up in the anatomy as the last bulge 
on the front of the abdomen. Okay, so we have a number of bulges coming down the front of the hips. Let me see if I can do this real, real roughly. Not again, not trying to do a good drawing, but just mental. So we have here's here's a neck, and we have first of all we have breasts, unless it's a female, then we have breasts, then we have a six pack, one, two, three, four, and then we have just the, the lower belly, belly, belly part of our <laughs> belly. You know what I mean? It's there's almost it's almost impossible to get musculature showing down here. It's super crazy bodybuilders do it, but nobody else does. Then the, the last little bulge of our anatomy, this is what I'm talking about right here, before we go into legs and before we go into, of course, genitalia, this right here, let me color it again. Okay, so this is one of the places that our hip bone shows up is with that bulge. We'll talk about that in, again in just a minute. Again, we're looking at it at a, a, at a torso from the side the person is looking to our right. Got it? So that's last bulge. The next place where this hip bone shows up is number three, the iliac crest. Now that's, I'm not going to insist that all my students learn all the names, but I am going to insist that all my students learn some of the names. And this is one you must learn. I-L-I-A-C, iliac crest. And I call it here, these are the hips. Well, let me show you what it is. This is number C. This refers to this shape right here. That's the iliac crest. And um, these are the hips. I'm gonna move you once again to look at me, you lucky people. I should have worn a Speedo for this, for this broadcast, don't you think? <laughs> I will broadcast, I will edit that part out of my, out of my video, I sure. Okay, because I wanna show you something. Here I am, an ordinary guy in ordinary blue jeans. When I put my hands on my hips, boom, I put them there. What am I putting them on? I'm putting them on my iliac crest. Okay, my iliac crest follows an arch just like this, right there. And, and, and uh, on, a, on a fairly thin person, so let me move you again to a piece of paper. On a fairly thin person or a person with not much clothing on, the, the uh, iliac crest is quite evident because there's a crease. So this is, a, I'm, I'm indicating here, a, uh, a person viewed from the front. Are you with me? So there, there's their waist. Let's put some clothes on so we don't get terribly embarrassed. But it's, <laughs> there's the navel, All right? The iliac crest appears as a bulge, a part of the bone that can be seen through the skin, iliac crest, okay? Then number four, the pubic triangle. So again, looking now at a, uh, at a, um, skeleton, a hip bone from the front. Again, what, what I talked about is the foremost last bulge in, in uh, view, it, it, uh, viewed from the side also is a triangle right here. Now, it, I'll, I'll try to speak real, real cautiously because there'll be kids in the room. So it's, it also corresponds to a hairline. Okay, that's all I'm going to say, right? So again, just to help you, um, identify it but that that essentially that triangle right there is created by the front part of the hip bone okay that's the fourth way that the hip there are others but there's a fourth main way that the hip bone shows through flesh and then uh, finally number e the front crease at the top of the leg so um, I've already drawn it right here I drew it with it's the pant line right there what does that correspond to that corresponds roughly to this part of the hip bone right there. So it is quite helpful. I wouldn't say that it's absolutely necessary, but it is quite helpful to be able to draw the hip bone because it will help you a great deal. It helps you to understand. Now, let me go one more step and get away from the hip bone for just a minute because I'm going to about, about to unload. I've already done this on, on video, but I'm going to do it again. There are actually two parts of the human body that we call hips. And this will help you quite a bit. Just once again, you'd have to look at me. Just a few minutes ago, I said to you that when I put my hands on my hips, I go like this. But when a man or a woman, 
and frankly, not being sexist, but it's the kind of thing we're more likely to hear a woman say. When, when a woman eats a bagel and, and laughingly says, let's, let's say good-natured situation here, the woman eats a bagel and she says, tomorrow I'll be wearing that on my hips, all right? Here's what she doesn't mean. She doesn't mean her iliac crest, even though her iliac crest is actually her hip bone. Are you with me? What part of her anatomy does she slap or tap or point to when she says, tomorrow this bagel will be right here? She points here. So this is a, just a, a good little tip to know. There's two separate and distinct parts of the human body that we call, quote unquote, hips. One is the iliac crest. The other is actually not our hips at all, but is the top of the femur. So this is be, look, look, viewing person from the front. This would be their left femur. And when we complain, when a, that woman complains about the bagel attaching itself to the hips, she's talking about this right here, this right here. And that is actually not hips at all. That's femur. All right. So let's go back to the drawing board just for a minute and wrap up this real quick lesson We'll see if I end up cleaning up this video. I like to think I will, but editing videos is such a pain. Maybe I'll just let it go with this. So there's two hips. One is primarily the iliac crest. The other is, see, this is what I hadn't done yet. The other is the top of the femur right there. So two completely different bones. They touch, but they're not the same bone, okay? And again, this just to help you finish. By the way, the holes in the down here in these little triangles, just brilliant. The more the more you study the human anatomy, just the more absolutely uh, the more amazing it becomes. Um, so I'm just drawing to try to help you see how this is a human being here. Um, the holes there are for all the blood vessels and nerves that go from our abdomen down into the into our legs, which of course are hugely important. Um, so the, the femur, the largest bone in the human body, the femur, the biggest weight bearing bone, uh, on the human body, uh, is essentially a part of the hip construction, but it's not literally a part of the hip bone because as you know, that, that turns so that the legs can go forward and back and out to the side. I mean, crazy people that can do splits. So it's like, ah, what's happening? This, I hate to think of what's happening right in there, but that's good for them that they can do that. All right, so I hope that will help you in drawing your hips. Um, I don't know if we want to review it one more time. Oh, sure, let's do it real quick. Okay, I want you to just go through with me kinesthetically. What are we doing? We made a bowl, then we stretched it, then we spilled it or tipped it, right? Then we whacked off the front, then we took a can opener. No, then we smooshed it. Then we took a can opener, opened the bottom, made a triangle. Then we add, then we added two legs to the front, two triangle legs. And then we took a ball peen hammer, in this case, the end of a pen and smooshed it to the side. Got it? And that, if you can remember that, then hopefully that will help you remember how to draw the hips. This is my face, not my hips. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Any chats? Oh, good. Somebody here from Russia or somewhere in Eastern Europe. Thanks for watching and th thanks for your, for, your, for your comments. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it helps you draw people better. I've got all kinds of body parts to go. It'll be fun. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.